Welcome to the campus of Washington and Jefferson College. I'm talking today with Mary Montague, who is here as the J. Robert Maxwell Visiting Scholar. Ms. Montague is an international peace negotiator who is known for her work in mediating the conflict in Northern Ireland, leading to the Good Friday Agreement. Since that time, she has been involved in mediation in places as diverse as Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Mary, what role do you believe peacemaking and mediation play in sustaining democratic societies? Unfortunately, in today's world, we have a lot of conflict. We have a lot of countries who are in internal conflicts. And I think to start off with, let's look at what does a country look like where democracy isn't fully being uh, felt by every citizen in that country. Uh, and I'm thinking of when democracies uh, fail, when democracy failed, um, for example, at the moment, even in Venezuela, where you have people who are struggling even to find everyday items to survive because democracy and government isn't working as it should. And when situations um, are faced like that, um, as and I've worked um, just lately with women leaders from Venezuela, um, it becomes vitally important through mediation um, and peace building to try and keep things as non-violent as, po as possible or at least to reduce the, the, the level of violence so that um, some kind of normal family life and community life can continue and of course protect life um, so that people can survive upheavals such as we're seeing in parts of the world today. So what are the competencies and values that we should look for in leaders who are capable of doing that sort of work? I think the most important word in your question is leader. I think strong leadership politically uh, and when I say politically, not just at the higher levels of government. I mean, a lot of my work uh, in Northern Ireland, in the north of Ireland, because it depends what uh, part of society you come in as to what you call Northern Ireland. Um, but if we think of leadership there, I'm thinking of the leadership that was vitally important at grassroots within communities, uh, our religious leaders, our community leaders, our ex-combatants, who give leadership to groups of armed people uh, so that they would lay down their arms and move towards pol uh, politics and peace. So those, those forms of leadership. And sometimes, actually, it's our political leaders who obviously have to be careful about continuing to hold their positions within political parties, and political parties have to hold positions on political thinking and policy. Um, and that is not always the type of leadership. In fact, in the middle of conflict, it's not the type of leadership that you require. What we require as peace builders is a leadership that says, I am responsible for every person, regardless of political opinion. I am responsible for the, the nurturing of this whole society. Um, and thinking along those lines and saying, what is it that I can actually compromise on? And what is it that I can sit down with my political opponent um, and find common ground on so that the divisions within societies don't deepen? So it's a very responsible form of leadership that is required. So you're speaking of responsibility and our mission statement actually calls us to develop responsible citizens. In what way do the things that you're speaking of apply to everyday citizens? I always say, people say, um, you know, it's wonderful where you do what, what you do and where you go to do it. And I always say, the most important thing about being a peacemaker for me is where I start with myself. And in the journey that I made, um, along with others in Northern Ireland, I had to face my prejudices towards, because I didn't come in from Mars, 
I grew up in Northern Ireland. I felt the effects of that division. I had the misunderstanding and the myths about others. So I actually had to start with myself and have those things challenged by the groups of people that were different from my community background. So I would say peace building starts with yourself. And then if you think about, you know, as you're growing up and you move into career, you move into whatever it is you want to do in life, it's so important to work within teams, etc., cetera, um, at trying to gain understanding of people. So peace building is something that is a part of every single day life. And of course, when you become a parent, as you know, John, I mean, you really do need to be a peace builder when you're a parent. I had two children and 40 foster children. And I would always say, I learned about mediation through actually seeing them all go through their adolescence. As a parent, you need to be a mediator and a peace builder. So in life, these are skills that we are using in everyday life, or we should develop for everyday life, because we're sending out those vibes of peace and understanding and curiosity about others just through the way we, we live every day. Well, I know that you have imparted that wisdom to our students here on our campus, and they have been grateful for your mentorship and uh, are going to be very sorry to see you go. What has the experience been like for you here at w &J? Well, this is my second full semester, and I had two previous visits. And I have to say that I love the college. Um, and I love the college for very specific reasons. This college is different. And I mean that very sincerely. I have spoken, I have been in attendance at many universities. But what I found in Washington and Jefferson College was a community. And in today's life, I think students and people, all of us, regardless of age, need to regain being part of a community. Um, and that's what Washington and Jefferson uh, is to me. It's a, it's a family, it's a small college, but it is a small college that works very hard. I think my students, every lesson we opened with a circle, with a restorative circle, to hear how one another were, what their week was like, and those things are so important in today's world. Young people communicate a lot through social media, but social media doesn't really build relationships. It's face-to-face -face dialogue, and the classes that I do, and the work of the peer mediators here, and our students doing CRS, and our education students who are learning how to do restorative practice in classrooms, are learning how to create community. And in today's world, we really need that. Well, Mary, our community is stronger and better because of your presence here. Thank you. We've been talking with Mary Montague, international peace negotiator and a visiting scholar here at Washington and Jefferson College. <laughs>